Welcome everybody to Evecos. I am Scarlet Pagonia of the Gita Bugs, and today I'll be making good on a promise to post a video of a high DPS fleet in Chlorellum and how I feel it should be built. And I know everybody's saying, I love my fleets the way I have them built, and that's wonderful. This video is not for you. If you don't want to change, that's great. Um, but this video is for people who like to see the pretty big ships and see what they can do. And this is what they can do. So before we get into the fittings and we watch these beautiful ships gracefully glide around one another, I know you're saying, gee whiz, Scarlet, it's just so keen. I love your fleet so much. How do I build my own fleet? And it's simple. When you go and get a new phone, and there's, you're going to get a new phone in your life, they're going to say, hey, do you want to trade in your old phone? And you say no, because where are you going to get, like they're going to offer you like $100 or something of the equivalent for it. Where are you going to get a tablet or a anything that's going to play Eve as great as your phone? You're not. Not for $100, you're not. So keep it. And then that becomes another account. And now your new phone has your original account, and now you're put an alt on that account. Even better, make a whole bunch of accounts now, and then as you get old like me, you will have accumulated a bunch of phones, and you will have Eve accounts on all of them to play actively. Now, you see the build, and the 36 kilometer optimal, which is a little excessive. I really build around 30 kilometer optimals, which is basically saying, I want you to be applying very, very high percentage of your damage at 30 kilometers. And that's how I roll with my fleets. And I will explain why that number is that number as the video goes. But for now, you can just kind of go through the build and you can see there are no defensive mods other than the one armor repairer on the ship. And that's how I built all four of these ships. The mid slots are all Nosferatu, Stasis Webifiers, or Target Painters. I tend to like Target Painters because once you click them on, they stay on for the until you have to lock again versus webs, which like go on and off depending if things are in your range. Not so much on the Balgorn, which has the 30 kilometer web range if you run with the Predators, but it's not necessary. Um, anything outside of 25 or 26 kilometers from the Federation things does not need to be webbed and you're just going to flap it. Anyway, it's going to be, you know, a battleship or something and they don't need to be webbed. So they all have Nosferatu webs and a target painter. They all have w at least one of each. Um, and for the low slots, obviously I have the three damage boosts and the one range boost, the tracking computer. And for the Ships with an extra one, I added an extra tracking computer. So that's how all these ships are built. Um, none of them have any defense. And this is where the theory craft comes into play, I guess. Um, if I told you the fight was going to last one second, would you put anything in your ship that was defensive? How about two seconds? Same thing, three seconds. And obviously, I don't need to count every second. But I guess I will. Four seconds? Five? Sorry about that. We were experiencing technical difficulties. But now you understand. Depending on how much damage your fleet is throwing out, the fight becomes shorter and shorter. And at what point do you no longer need defense? And approximately eight or 9,000 DPS and you are set. I mean, one of these ships can do one mission successfully with no defense. Uh, but you will not be able to sustain. By the time, if you were to then immediately warp to the next mission, you would arrive less than 100%. So each time, you would eventually die. You, you, you would be, it would go down each time. You wouldn't be able to sustain. At some point, you would have to stop and let your repairer catch up. But if you, it might even be less. It, it, somewhere around 8,000, though, it becomes easy money where you are pretty much guaranteed. There's very, very select cases where one ship just constantly gets the targeting 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 and you're getting very fast clears at you might have to like slow down minuscule amount of time but it's never happened to me like it made me at least think about it and want to mention it but i don't worry about it i don't i don't even think about it at this point because i've done this a lot of times and no one has ever died so that's how i roll it seems to work great and so why do i do it this way 
What makes this better than a ranged build? Well, first of all, you can add salvagers to your, you know, one or more ships, and I will do a video on this, but essentially you are better off with multiple salvagers on the same ship, as opposed to multiple salvagers on different ships. Also, if you take a range ship, now what you've built for basically maximum damage, but you have ranged guns on it, like your APOC striker. Like my APOC striker, I think is, I don't exactly remember. It's like 2,200 cold. And then when you siege it, it's like 35, 3,600. But that's what the range guns. If you were to take brawl guns and then play that exact same APOC, exactly the same it was, don't change anything, nothing, no, nothing. And just put brawl guns on it, your DPS is gonna skyrocket. Because if you wanna do the maximum amount of damage, you have to use brawl guns. The reason people don't is because they keep trading their slots, their, their, mo their module slots. So for instance, oh yeah, to get the brawl guns, I need to add too many defensive slots and I need to get rid of too much offense, where now I'm either breaking even or I'm actually losing DPS over my range build. But if you simply take your range build and change the guns to brawl guns, it's not possible for you to lose damage. No guns, no ranged guns. Guns. Missiles are weird because they they don't about they don't obey the same rules. So when you're talking lasers, railguns, cannons, none of the ranged ones actually hit harder than the close ones. It's just the close ones have better tracking speed and they hit harder, but they lose the range. That's it. You know, it's like you're trading range for everything else that's good, pretty much. So when you're running missions in high security, unless you're just literally giving your money away, you don't care about money, and all you like to do is fly around and kill stuff and you don't care about it, then what you're doing is you're trying to earn money as quickly as possible. So how do you do that? Literally add it up. It you could go through, you bring up your wallet, and you can add up everything that you did in an hour or whatever it is, and then compare that to different techniques. So whatever you're doing in your ranged build, you're probably not looting wrecks, and maybe you have, like, let's say another, oh, I have whatever it is that you fly around in and loot wrecks in afterwards while your main fleet flies off going and doing the next mission, you could have that account with another ship exactly picture a copy of yourself right next to you doing everything you're doing hitting just as hard as you're doing you could have that instead of that loot ship every time you add a loot ship you're really taking away in my case a faction battleship from your fleet so i don't want to take a faction battleship out of my fleet in order to add a loot ship it's ridiculous um so you sit at zero with your salvagers if you want loot just sit there and loot it as you go to loot afterwards is absurd it really is quite absurd it's such a waste of your time your money is in your killing you can't sit around and wait for salvaging anything that you're doing you're not paying attention to your main fleet and you're clicking over here while you're trying to loot on a separate screen you're wasting time you're not paying attention to your fleet you're losing money it's just the way it is add it up do the math literally do the math i i do it all the time how much did i make that hour oh i don't want to be doing that that was a complete waste of time and you have to add in everything. If you have to take your stuff to Jita and sell it, that's all time that you have to add into your ISK per hour. So all that loot, if you're going to waste time like separating what needs to be sold and all that, that all gets added into your mission time. And so it's all ISK per hour total. So for me, I don't even look at what I loot. I just bring it back to the shop, shop wherever I dock, and I just salvage everything right from my hold right into the thing. Anything that can't be salvaged, I just drop it into my item hanger and then I'm out. I don't even look at nothing because trying to determine which is worth selling is too much of a waste of time. It's a waste of money because think about when I'm out running mission, let's say I'm making, I, I don't know, 2 million isk every minute. Let's say I'm doing that. Then what am I trying to like scribble over a few hundred thousand and I'm going to take 10 minutes doing that? I just lost 20 million isk while I'm trying to make those decisions with that I could have been earning. So you get it. Every, you know, you got to take your earning, how much you earn per minute 
and then apply that to the rest of the game. So it's like if you're saying, okay, I want to earn so much amount in a day and then I'm good, then go do that. Then you can go PvP or whatever you want and have some fun. But I know personally I'm running four accounts. That's a lot of Plex I got to earn every month just to run this fleet. And you got to, you know, budget your time. You know, you have one hour to earn ISK. Go. And Null is amazing. And you can get crazy bounties there and yada, yada, yada. But there's an enemy fleet coming through. Everybody dock up. But it's like, oh, I only get two hours to play and it's during this part of the day. And if I have to dock up for an hour and a half out of that two hours, then I just lost 75% of my day. So that's just my personal opinion that I think for a grind type play where you're just going to be, say, running anomalies or just running missions, I prefer high sec because it doesn't have any interruptions. And once you're going, you're going, you're going, you're going. And if you happen to have multiple people with T10 missions, it's even better. It You can really keep it going at a really high pace. Basically all day. For as long as you want. You can keep adding people to the fleet if you want. If you like to do things as a corporation. It's, it's wonderful. Now, running a fleet doesn't have to be overwhelming. Um, you bring up the fleet menu, which is currently under the mission box there on the left. It's a little circle. And you enable your caretaker mode of and you have your entire fleet enable caretaker mode. And what caretaker mode is going to do, it's going to execute automatically commands given from your fleet commander. Technically, anybody with the rank to order commands can order these commands. It doesn't have to be the fleet commander, but you understand. So you can do fleet jump. You can have the one button from where you're standing. If I were to just click on the Stargate and click fleet jump, all of these things would be automatically executed and all these ships would then warp to the Stargate and jump through automatically. Um, you do not have to warp them to the gate first and then click jump. You can do the jump from anywhere. Now, if you're already warping and then you click the jump, I've had varying success with that. I wouldn't recommend that. What else does the caretaker mode do? It will allow you to fleet approach and you can a fleet approach an object like the you know money area safety concern mission begin or it could be you or any ship in your fleet so you could just simply and you'll see me pop it up it'll pop up the fleet menu and i'll just tap on the approach me icon and what that does is it issues the command to the entire fleet hey everybody approach me and the caretaker mode will automatically execute that after eight to ten seconds i'm not exactly sure how many seconds Right there, you see me do it. Now, the fleet has received the command, but they're not executing it right now. Right now, it's just saying, hey, do you want me to execute this? And if you do nothing, it will automatically, you'll just see all the ships automatically just suddenly start following me. But when you tap approach me, how close will they approach you? They will approach you to whatever you set your default approach difference distance your default approach distance on your ship. So not your fleet, on your ship. If you were like, for instance, if I were to tap on my Balgorn, it would bring up a radial menu. It would have set drone command range, ship info, set orbital range, set orbit, set default orbit, set default approach. And if I were to set my default approach to, whatever I set my default approach to, say five, if I were then to click on the fleet menu and tap approach me, the fleet would approach me to my default approach button. My fleet would approach me to five. So I keep my approach set to one kilometer on my ships that I order my commands from so that when I tap approach me, my ships will approach me to one kilometer. And you can do zero, but I find that zero becomes more of a hectic jumbling and they never quite settle. Um, I wish you could do like a half of a Kilometer, but alas, there is no halves. And that's about it. I mean, the orbit is the same rule as the approach. And that applies for anything. So if my default is, say, four kilometers, and I tap on the religious trial mission beacon here and just tap on fleet approach, everybody would approach it to four kilometers. Um, it's just that simple. And those kind of things would help you. Um, which ones? Will the caretaker mode not 
obey? Well, it's pretty much just those three. I think it's fleet jump, um, fleet approach, and fleet orbit. So things like fleet stop and fleet focus fire and all those things will not be executed in caretaker mode. Now, when you tap the located here button, the ships will approach you to zero. They'll actually bump into you, but then they'll stop following you and they'll literally just stay wherever they are when they reach you. And if you are moving and they can't get to you, they will just keep following you until they get there, at which point they will bump you and they will stop. But the approach me command or follow command, they will continually follow you at the given distance. And it's not a given distance or less, it's exactly. So they will try to get exactly one kilometers one kilometer from whatever it is that you order them to get one kilometer from, and they will continue to try to do that. So if you move around, they will follow you um, as you move, which is usually a good thing. Now, originally I ran a ranged build on my ship, my original ship when I only had the one, and my I just really loved it. And I, I like the fact that I could fight stuff that was too hard for me to tank. Um, and I guess a lot of people are in that case. And like, you can't sit like this at zero without moving in anything less than a battleship. You would need at least some kind of defense. So why do I sit without moving? Why don't I get my ships rolling and moving about? Maybe get some propulsion on them. And I'll tell you why. It's because of this. Your ship will do more damage when it stands still than it will do when it's moving. And... I guess the exception to this are, are drone boats and missile boats because I guess if the movement takes you out of missile range, then you're losing DPS. But other than that, there's really nothing, there's no penalty for moving in a drone boat or a missile boat. But all the other ships, when you move even a little bit, unless you are literally moving on a exact vector with that other ship, your transversal goes up. So like, let's say that other ship is going to the right, but slightly down, and you're going to the right, but slightly up. You are still adding transversal to that equation by moving. So you're thinking, oh, no big deal, I'm still hitting. Yeah, but you're not critting as much as you have. You're not getting as many smashes. You're not getting as many penetrates. You're missing. Every once in a while when you miss, it's because you're moving. It's, you're losing damage by moving. And you don't need to move, so why do you want to lose damage? It's when it comes down to it, that's just my reasoning. Why do I want to lose damage? I don't need to move, so why do I want to lose damage? Because it's simple fact, you can't, you can't deny it. You do less damage when you're moving. And if you don't think that that's true, well, I don't know what to say. Make a recording of yourself and add up the numbers and calculate your DPS. Like, you're wrong, I don't know what to say. You do more damage while sitting still because of transversals. That's just all, that's just the way it is. Smashes and penetrates and crits, they're all calculated based on how hard do you hit this ship. And every little bit that you're moving is just taking a little bit off to the side. Oh, that would have been a wreck, but it's just a penetrate. Oh, that would have been a smash, but it's just a hit. That's all because you're moving. You could be doing more if you're standing still. That extra low slot that you would save by... Let's say you wanted to build a ship with no repairs, but oh, I'm gonna build a range ship and you know, you have one rep on every ship. I'm gonna save that one slot. It's, you can't make up the difference in one slot. There's no way. The fact that I spend one slot on defense, but it allows me to use the close range guns. It's, there's no way you can make up the difference in that one slot. Because at this point, you probably already have three damage mods. So adding a fourth, is going to add nothing. A fourth damage mod is almost useless on a ship. It, unless you, you're talking about bursts and you're like, oh, I need to burst in pairs and stuff like that, fine. If you're, if you're talking about the burst and you need to be running pairs, sure, I get it. You know, four slots works out nice. Uh, it actually works out very nice. But the actual cold DPS by adding a fourth damage mod is negligible at best. Now, I do run my Vindicator with rifled railguns just because of the notoriously horrible range on the snubs. And I would have to then add a... I wouldn't have to add a propulsion, but I would have to move my Vindicator into range in order for it to do any damage at all. And it just... The math doesn't add up. Um, you take... You, there's too much time spent out of optimal range. 
in a in a purely offensive build. Um, you, it just doesn't add up. It, it you clear so much, so much slower with snubs than you do with rifles. Um, there, I'm. I don't really know what the stigmas are on things, but rifled railguns are amazing guns. So my personal choices for guns by weapon type are auto cannons, rifled railguns, uh, pulse lasers, and to be honest, the beam lasers are great. Um, they're my personal choice for the 100 kilometer builds, but I like the beam lasers just for the pure damage. And of course, any type of missile that you throw on a Bargas is going to be wonderful. So you really can't go wrong. You can run torpedoes, rapids, or missiles. It just depends on on your personal preferences and your range. The, the torpedoes tend to be just at 30 kilometers. So they do tend to miss targets anywhere past that. But the rapids, they might not give you the numbers that you're looking for, but they apply damage so well and they really will just kill as fast as any of the other weapons. Okay, so this is a good spot. You can see the Macario is really taking a beating. I'm like, I guess it's happened earlier in the video and the three little circles on the upper right not the ones all the way at the top that's my fleet that's well obviously the health bar for you will be the circle in the center but the the other three in your fleet are those three little ones and you can see the one of them is in to the armor and i do run my macario as an armor repair not shield and I highly recommend this if you're fighting primary lasers because lasers just wreck shields when it comes down to it. So if you can get away with running an armor rep instead of a shield rep, and as a Makaro, you have identical hit points for your shield and armor. So anybody trying to say that you should run it with shield and not armor, they're just wrong when it comes down to it. Um, that's personal preference and you should run it however you want. Shields will be harder on the capacitor, while armor repairers will be harder on the power grid. One shield rep will repair more in, say, a one minute cycle than an armor rep, but the 0% EM damage resistance on shields, coupled with shields with laser damage incoming towards you, which are doing 65% of its damage, as EM damage, they're just going to tear through your shields. And the fact that you're repairing for more is going to mean nothing. You're going to have to add, then add. You don't have to because the damage isn't that great for these missions, but one armor rep will keep up so easily while one shield rep will really keep your capacitor challenged. Even in, in a Macario, you will have to run the double Nosferatu probably to get away with a shield booster while one Nosferatu will easily handle an armor repairer. That being said, don't slack on your support skills. Do not slack, and when I say slack, do not skip afterburner skills. Do not skip shield hardening skills, shield boosting skills. Do not skip all the generic skills in your ships. They are so important. Engineering skills can make a huge difference. Oh my god, your capacitor is always empty and no matter how you build your ship, you can't seem to get it stable. It's probably because you have no engineering skills. Your engineering skills are absolutely essential to building a stable ship for PvE content. This finally brings me to why I fight 0 to 30. Because it's always a range at which you're fighting in. You never simply fight at one distance. If you warp in at 100 kilometers, you have to cover a spawn range from 75 kilometers to 125 kilometers. But if you warp in at zero, you're only covering zero to 25 kilometers. It does not get farther by going in the other direction because you're at the center of the circle. Which allows you to build ships to apply damage in their optimal range the entire fight. There's no dealing with the fallout damage and you're also building ships to be literally as much damage as possible. The only thing that you could do would be to take off the one armor rep and add one damage mod, which after you have three damage mods is basically adding nothing. So you're not losing anything really by adding the one rep, maybe a little bit of range and that's it. But if you're fighting zero to 30, you already have enough range. So there you have it. I mean, you can sit at zero. Your auto salvagers are gonna go zero to 30 kilometers. 
the drone salvagers are going to go zero to 48 kilometers. Uh, your webs are going to go zero to 30 kilometers. Your main weapon, laser weapons, are going to be zero to 30 kilometers. Everything screams, if you are laser especially, to go zero to 30 kilometers. Now, as I sit here watching this, I realize people like to see things fail. They, they, they watched this video hoping that it would go epically wrong and one of my ships would blow up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I used to do in EVE Online and I would spend, I forget what it was, it was a simple amount of money, 50 million, let's say. And I would build the best ship I could out of that 50 million and I would just go out until it blew up, basically. And I would use a blank clone, no implant. Um, <clears throat> and I built the worm once. I honestly, to this day, don't think it ever blew up. I, I would do ridiculous things in it and it wouldn't die. I would do stupid things in it and it wouldn't die. It just was the ship that wouldn't die. It was an amazing little thing. Anyway, that's it everybody. Thanks for watching. I am Scarlet Begonia and it's time for the Jita Bugs to go go. Please. So hit that like, hit that subscribe, do that thing you do. I hope to see you here in New Eden. You can find me over in Chlorellum most of the time. Come on by and say hi. Warp drive.